excited to be here and to share this with you. During quarantine, I decided to create some painting classes and I went about it like from back when I was younger and the things that I wish I had when I was learning to paint, I wanted to be able to like sit down and watch somebody from start to finish. And so that's essentially what these classes are. So here's what all it includes. A paints crash course video that talks to you about the different types of paint, color mixing videos that teach you how to mix colors. There are 10 separate painting courses and each one is broken into three segments a beginning, middle, and an end. There's also free bonus material that's available to you through my website. If you want, I have a lot of extra resources for you, printables, um, tips um, on how to make your artwork better, tips on choosing your color palette, all that kind of stuff. You can receive that on my website if you go to www.samanthawood.art and go up to the top where it says art class. You can click that and then um, fill out the little form there for email and the request for um, that extra bonus information and I'll email that to you. And you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and then also on TikTok. On Instagram especially, I would love for you um, to share what you're painting and to tag me um, so that I can see what you are up to. You can also check out what kind of art I'm creating and what I've been up to while you're there. I'd love to see um, what you're creating and find out if these courses have been helpful to you. So anyways, we will go ahead now and get started on this first lesson. Oh, one last thing. This little intro is going to be the same on every single video, so you can just skip it um, or pick up. Like if you don't need the color mixing videos, just pick up where you're interested um, along the way. I'll be releasing this content on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week for the next few months until everything has been released. So anyways, I'm excited that you're here and I hope to see you over on Instagram or Facebook too. All right, fellow coffee connoisseurs, I'm so excited you're here. I absolutely love coffee. One of my favorite things to enjoy in life. So this is a super fun course and we are gonna go ahead and jump in and get started. But before that, I need to tell you two things. You will need to have your canvas like already primed with a solid color um, so that it's ready to be painted on and so the white doesn't show through. And then the other thing is you will need to have your palette fixed so that if you want to paint along with me while I'm painting, um, you have that ready. So now we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm noticing when I look at the picture is that the top of the coffee cup, see how it makes like an oval or a circle? That's the shape we want to get on there first. And it's definitely not a perfect circle. Um, it's kind of like it kind of got squished down a little bit. So we're going to kind of get that in place. Um, the top of it, I'm kind of going to put marks. Like the top of it, the highest point comes to about there. The side comes to over there. And then probably about there. And then the bottom, kind of right at the middle of the canvas, it looks like about right there. Okay, so I'm going to make this shape now into... The top of the cup and if you mess up don't worry about it just paint it until you get it right I feel like mine might be a little bit longer like it may need to come up a little bit higher and maybe down just a tad bit more right there in the center to give it a little bit more roundness Okay, so then I can take some pink and just kind of paint over, like I'm not going to use that line, so I'll just kind of cover that up and know to use the top one. So now I'm going to go ahead and put, instead of going on and drawing the sides, then it a lot of times will get lopsided. What I found works is if you take the top of your mug and you skip down and put the line at the bottom. I want to make sure I'm coming down from the center and leaving enough room at the bottom so it should be right about here. It may not be perfect but that at least gets us on you know going in the right direction. 
All right, and then this kind of cur gently curves. So we're just kind of like connecting the lines now. So kind of curving that over. And then on this side, I'm gonna do the same. Then I'm gonna go back later and add the handle. So I'm coming out from these furthest points. So you don't wanna like draw your side in from here and have that circle sticking out. You wanna find the furthest points and come down from there. I might should have made that curve out just a little bit more there. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. It's just come in a little bit here. And a little bit here. It looks like I'm moving my white lines back to where I had them at the beginning. Yeah, that's looking more like the shape right there. Okay, so now for this little handle, it's kind of like you can see a letter C kind of in there. So I'm going to start like in the inner part of it first. So I'm going to drop down to right about there is where it starts. It comes out to about here and then it comes back. If I'm doing that. I'm gonna do the front edge, which it kinda, you know, is tricky with your brain at first, but I'm gonna stay at the front edge so it'll come down to about there. So it comes up, curves over, and then comes down like that. Okay, and then the back edge we see right here, and then it disappears over there. And then at the top, the back edge comes out from this part. And that line actually comes up higher and comes out like that. It looks like I have a little bit of extra space here. And this is a pretty rounded mug, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round out this side just a little bit more. And then move this out. Okay, so now I'm gonna kinda put in place like my shadow. I can see kind of like a little double shadow here, but I'm gonna focus on the darker one. And it comes up, has a great curve in it, comes in over there, and then curves and down and around, and then just fades out. Then back here, you can see a line um, in the background, and this is one of those things, it's like your choice, like you can have this shadow just fade away, or you might add that line um, and add in like a pattern at the back part. Like there's, you know, a wall back there. So I'm going to put that line there because I think I may be creative with this one and add something in the background. And then it's like you pretend you're going through that and it should really be down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just kind of checking things. Oh, I'm noticing one thing that's wrong is this curves down a whole lot. And really in the picture, it comes out more. So I'm gonna fix that. So just kind of go back after you get it sketched out. Whether, and if drawing it with paint is, doesn't work well for you, you can always draw it out on there with pencil and then paint over it. The only thing I know is that sometimes um, people will have trouble with their paint, or I mean their pencil lines, like showing through the paint. So that's something to think about. I like it this way because I've just learned to like erase with my background color of paint and cover it up. Um, I've learned that it doesn't matter later. So it really doesn't bother me to work this way. But if it does, you then find what works for you. And if drawing on pencil is way better, um, you know, then do that. The line for where the coffee is after you get the coffee cup done, um, I'm going to make a line where I can see like the dark brown coffee and those little bubbles. I'll do the bubbles later, but for right now, I'm just kind of putting this line where it would be.
So now moving on to blocking in the colors. And I'm noticing that around the rim of the cup is kind of my lightest. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. You can like tint yours like with a little bit of blue to make it more of a blue green color or with a little bit of yellow to make it more of a lime green color. So just like be creative and like make it yours. And remember, if you don't like what you do, it doesn't matter because this is just your base coat on there. We're gonna come back over it um, more times and continue working on it, so. Okay, so I've got that light, and while I've got some light on my brush, I'm just gonna put in some other lights that I see, like right here on this handle, it's kinda light. And then right out here. Now I'm gonna get some white in my brush because I'm seeing this big swooping highlight that comes down here. Just working quickly because I want to keep things kind of wet as I'm going. So now I'm going to get um, kind of a medium green and I'm mixing my permanent green light and some emerald green now kind of for this. coat is not going to look good. We're not expecting it to. We're just kind of mapping things out. I'm going to get some emerald green with just a little bit of sap. And come in down here. I like that emerald green, that sap green. That really makes that color that's in the photo. And then I'm just going to get the extra paint out of my brush and kind of Blend that out a little bit with a dry brush, and the same here. Okay, and then it's pretty dark in this area. a little bit of white and yellow and just kind of so I don't get confused later just kind of fix that there and now I'm going to come in and then this part underneath is very dark got kind of dark on this side to getting very dark over there. I'm going to wash my brush out, <clears throat> add that coffee in. I just got to mix a little bit of brown with it just because, just to know, <laughs> but it still basically looks almost black. So we are on the right track now. I'm just going to use some of this dark color I've got and kind of put a little outline. Think about my shadow for a minute um, and my background. This is such a hard decision. Um, I'm going to... I want to just kind of show you like how you can change something up and make it yours. So I am going to add a pattern up here, down here. I just, my personal favorite for shadows is like a bluish purple color. Okay, so coming in with this shadow, I've mixed my bluish purple color. And notice as you get closer like to the cup, the shadow gets like even darker. So I got just a little bit of purple on my brush. So that right there, it's a bit darker and I can work on that more later. 
So now from this point out, I am just going to wash my brush out and add white and kind of blend out what I had there. I'm starting up here with my clean white um, and then I'm going to blend down. And then mix with the purple. I don't want to go up because then it's like I won't ever get to the bright white. So that's why I keep my colors apart at first. And then later um, I will mix them. And while I've still got the clean white, I'm going to go on and fill in this part with the white too. ready to mix that bluish purple color and blend it up. And now I'm just going to get a dry brush so I can kind of come in here. Yeah, and it's like definitely not like I want it yet, and that's okay because it's just that first coat. We're just getting it on there. Okay, and then now I've got to go, I'm going to go look at some patterns and figure out what kind of vibe I want. If you um, are not used to like looking up ideas, you can go to Pinterest and just type in the word like pattern or you can type in floral pattern or retro pattern or 60s pattern or green and orange pattern, whatever kind of pattern you're wanting. So I've got to kind of think about that for a minute. Um, so I'm gonna go look at some patterns, kind of get an idea. I usually try to change up what I find so it's not just like an exact copy, um, but I do want to add like a little bit of interest back there. So I'm gonna go do a little bit of research and then come back and we'll add a pattern. Okay, so I decided I wanna keep kind of like the thing going that I've got. So I'm gonna do a black and white pattern for the background. And rather than have it white with black, I think I'm gonna do black with white for more contrast. So all I'm gonna do right now is just go ahead and get some black and fill in that area um, for that first coat. And then later I'll come back and paint the pattern on it. Another tip for you, if you're having trouble, <clears throat> especially starting out like, um, you know, painting around certain shapes. Uh, there are many times when I'll turn my canvas just because it's easier to paint like around the edge of something when it's turned at a different angle. So there is nothing that says your canvas has to stay in upright position the whole time. <laughs> so feel free if that makes things easier for you when you're painting an awkward area, flip your canvas around. It can save you a lot of time and struggle. Already liking that a lot. I like my decision. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll be ready to come back for the second coat. All right, so after just one time, we've gotten a pretty good start on our coffee cups and I'll see you back for part two.